I just need to talk about an animated basket strainer today. We can see a picture of an animated basket strainer here on the left. We're just going to click on the full screen 3D model to have a better view of it. Now a basket strainer has the name basket strainer because it looks more or less like a basket. We can see here as we zoom in that that is the strainer. Now notice I said strainer, it's not a filter. So when you clean the strainer, it will return back to its original condition. With a filter, that won't happen. And you can see from the shape here, the fluid will flow in. In fact, what we'll do in a moment, we'll assemble it first and then we can talk about what it does and what it doesn't do. Okay, so here is the suction side of the filter casing. So fluids will pass in here, pass in. So we can just line this up right. There we go. Now we are inside the filter casing. Let's try and have a look up here. Now what's going to happen is any bits of or any objects that are in the fluid are going to get stuck, or the larger objects are going to get stuck to the strainer. Now these squares are only going to allow, or perforations I should call them, they're only going to allow objects to flow through that are smaller than these squares. So if you have big plastic bags or seaweed or I don't know what else, it depends on the system cert, they'll actually be contained within this space. So it'll be contained within the strainer. And you can see there, there's the shape again. It's cut, so all the fluid flows in from this direction. And then the, any large objects will be contained within the strainer. Sometimes they accumulate in the bottom of the strainer. And the fluid, the clean fluid with less objects, will flow out through here. Now, it depends on how big the strainer perforations are, how big these holes are, and that depends on how fine you're going to be filtering the fluid as it flows. Normally, though, this type of strainer, the basket strainer, will be used for high flow systems. You won't normally use it where you need to have fine filtering. The reason is that the strainer gets quite easily blocked and you end up cleaning it quite often. Now, we'll have a quick look at all the different components here. You can see we've got a strainer casing here, and then we've got a plug here. This plug is for draining any fluids down from the inside. So if you, if you isolated the strainer on the suction side and the discharge side, you'd then be able to open this plug and the fluid would drain out. Unfortunately, as you're draining the fluid out, you're actually going to create a vacuum inside the filter casing, providing the valves, the suction and discharge valves, are sealing correctly. So what you'll normally have as well, if we just assemble it quickly, is a place to drain fluid from the top and you could use this eye bolt as a good example. This eye bolt here is for lifting the filter lid off but sometimes you can also unscrew it and it will be used as a air purge so you'll be able to open that up and you'll be able to see if there's any pressure inside or you'll be able to open it up and it will draw air in as the fluid's being drained from the base here. Obviously before you do this you want to make sure the strainer is absolutely isolated the strainer itself might be several cubic meters or have a capacity for several cubic meters. So you don't want to leave a valve here slightly open and then open the eye bolt here on the top. If you unscrew the eye bolt here and it's still under pressure, you won't be able to get the eye bolt back in again. Another example or another way to do this would be to slacken off all the nuts and bolts and then gently give it a tap with a plastic hammer or a plastic mallet and you'll find if it's under pressure, the lid will lift off, but then you'll be able to tighten the nuts and the bolts back together without having a massive gush or an uncontrollable gush of fluid coming out the sides here or through the eye bolt, etc. So that's normally, if you were going to work on this strainer, that's normally what you would do. You would close the suction valve, close the discharge valve, and then slacken the nuts and the bolts off, tap the sides, see how much pressure is in there. And if you wanted to, or if you were absolutely certain that there's no pressure in there, you could also open the drain here at the bottom, do that first, and then remove the eye bolt at the top and allow air to be drawn in as the strain is draining. Let's just explode it back out again so we can see the parts. Now we'll start away at the top. We've got here a lifting eye. This is to lift off the lid. As I said earlier, these are quite large sometimes, so you might not be able to just manually lift them off. And you use an eye bolt so that you can attach some sort of crane or mechanism, maybe a chain block for lifting off the lid. There's the lid here, normal nuts, bolts, washers, etc. 
On the other side here of the lid, on the inside, we can see we've got the strainer. This is constructed of stainless steel. It was designed with a seawater system in mind. You see the bar here in the middle where the number seven is. That's actually a handle, so you'd be able to lift that up and pull the strainer out. Again, depending on the size, you might need to use a chain block or some sort of hoisting device. And typically, these strainers are actually welded in the corners here. And I would say quite often, the handle as you're lifting it out tends to actually break off. But hopefully that will never happen to you. And again, the strange shape here, as the flow comes through this side and then out the other side. Go further down, we've got a gasket here. The gasket will be constructed normally from rubber or perhaps some sort of textile material. And normally when you're assembling it back together again, you'll put some sort of adhesive on here to stick the gasket onto the lid and onto the casing. And important, obviously, that the gasket lines up with the holes for the nuts and bolts. You don't want to be putting a bolt through the top of the lid, then through the gasket or hammering it through the gasket to get it lined up correctly. So normally what you do there is you actually just get a screwdriver, put it through the lid, line up the gasket correctly in several places, and then you'll be able to get the bolts through a lot more easily. You can see from the color here inside, this is actually a shiny copper color. And because this is a seawater system, this will probably be made from copper nickel or some sort of brass alloy. And the reason for that is it has very good corrosive resistance properties in seawater systems unlike many other materials which will tend to corrode away very very quickly. Admittedly though, these strainers and the strainer casings etc can be constructed from a number of different materials. This would include PVC or polymer based materials. It all depends on the system being served and it all depends on what's flowing through it, if it's corrosive, erosive, what sort of pressures and temperatures are going to be reached etc. But they're very robust in design, they're very simple. You'll see these filters a lot as they're used in many different types of industries. As always, it'd be good to get on the website, have a look around and then take one apart. You can either assemble it or explode it or watch it being exploded, assembled, doesn't really matter. And then just try and figure out how it works if you're not certain. And I think really this is the best way to learn. Anyway, I hope you find that informative and a little bit interesting. Thank you very much for your time.